Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Zach Jalab channel. Thank you so much for joining me. And today, it's a West London takeover. <laughs> Barely in my life, I think I'd get one Fulham fan to shoot with, let alone two at the same time. Henry and John. JTC, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, two Fulham fans for the first time then. It is. It is. Yeah, odd. We'll see what happens. But quite maybe an unbiased view, though, I which is so. what I think the people at home want to be seeing. Henners, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, really good. Where do you get your set designs from? Zach? Oh, uh, you know no, what, mate? Just, you know what? I'm I feel lucky. like I recognise this place. I'm a very I'm not, lucky person. Not, not sure where. I'm a very lucky person, that's for sure. Um, but yes, as you guys have seen by the title of today's video, we're going to be looking and ranking your club's most disappointing player this season. Now, the way this has worked is I put a tweet out earlier this week to ask for your suggestions for players from your club who you think has been super disappointing so far this season. It doesn't have to be a brand new signing. It could be a player that's been there his whole career. It could be a player that joined last season. It could be a player that joined this season. And thank you so much. You guys came in your 50s. <laughs> Around 50 people replied, I think, at the time. I did it, it's about 24 hours ago, so thank you so much. Um, and we are going to go through some of their suggestions and talk about them. I'm going to start off with Manchester City and a guy who actually has been in the headlines for slightly different reasons, I think, recently. We won't, probably won't touch upon those. Um, but Kyle Walker, this came at the suggestion of Jack Tivo, and he said, knowing his previously high standards, he's been quite poor, especially since Guardiola tried his hardest to get him to stay in the summer. Obviously, he did reject that move to Bayern Munich, didn't he? And, and now he's also been awarded the captain's armband. Mm. Now, he started 20 Premier League games so far this season. He is normally starting week in, week out for them. Uh, and there has probably been a noticeable drop-off so far. I mean, it is also not just Kyle Walker, though, Henry, is it? The whole Man, Man City squad has been a little bit worse. Yeah, and yet they're still pretty good, so I'm not, <laughs> not, not too worried about them. But I actually thought in the summer was a really nice time for Kyle Walker to move on, I think. Mm. He achieved everything he needed to achieve. He's not getting any younger, is he? I mean, that, let's bear in mind, what is he, 34 now? Yeah. 33, 34, so he's not getting any younger either. Obviously, he's a huge figure in the dressing room as well as on the pitch. I don't think he's been all that bad. I mean, we have to bear in mind, like the way that Pep's defences play every year seems to change all the time. Yeah. There's always different expectations of what he wants from his from his defenders and whatnot. And I think with the injuries they've had, they've had to chop and change a lot yeah. in that back line, uh, even in the midfield too. You know, missing Rodri at certain moments and it can't be understated how important he is as a shield. So I'm not pinning all the blame on Carl Walker. I still don't think that really... There's no one I look in that City squad and say, you've let this team down. Mm, um, mm. And I think just to go for like the right back in some sense is a bit bit of an easy move. But, Ageist. Uh, yeah, Ageist well, yeah. maybe. And they have been missing a lot of players, like you said. They've been missing Rodri at times, mm. De Bruyne, Haaland. And I think it's a little bit of recency bias because I think those two goals against Newcastle last yeah. week came down his side, cut in, same goal. I don't think he's been all too bad. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one. Like... The issue is, I guess, when they don't have Carl Walker, they what? They played a Kanji there last season for a little mm. bit. Uh, Rico Lewis doesn't seem to be getting played there at mm. right back. He's preferred him at left back, if not DM, or even slightly forward as well. Um, and so there's really no other option other than Kyle Walker. And also, when you have performed at like the incredibly high standards that he has for the last what six, seven, eight well, he years just got in the world eleven, it, didn't he? Exactly, so yeah. He and even with yeah. even with the World Cup as well, uh, even with the in England performances he's had, he's sometimes been some of England's best players. Mm. Um, then it's understandable that like you are eventually going to see a slight drop off. And when the whole other, when the rest of the entire team are also kind of dropping off a little bit, then I think it's understandable that he will as well. I remember during the World Cup, the French media really focused on Mbappe versus Carl Walker. He has the respect of every of all mm. the best wingers in the world. Even when City yeah. plays Real Madrid, that nice scenes of him and Vinny Jr. Mm. at the end. There is there is no winger that doesn't respect Carl Walker. They know that he he's probably the big like biggest clutch right back in world football, in my opinion. In terms of like the big games against the best best players, Carl Walker's the guy that you can trust yeah. with his pace, with his physicality, of his knowledge. And yeah, he 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 he's the guy to sort of shore up that defence. So yeah, I, I I'm not gonna Rail on Kyle Walker for a bad few weeks. Okay, okay. I do think he has dropped, though. I do think, like, I can understand why for City fans, they might look at it and go, like, okay, if we're going to look at one player to pin it on, then I guess maybe Kyle Walker is, is the guy because he has been worse than, than last season. Um, all right, then, let's move to Chelsea. Um, a couple of players here were, were mentioned, um, quite a lot, actually, so we'll cover both of them. Uh, the first one was from CFC Hedgley, uh, Levi Colwell. Um, who is obviously only 20 years old mm. and 
considering how impressive he was at Brighton last season playing centre back, um, it has he hasn't probably quite hit the heights that he was last year, uh, this year with Chelsea. But you said it there, playing centre back. Where's he playing for Chelsea? Left back. Right. So I feel like it's a potch thing for me. Whenever I watch it, I'm, I'm not sure what he's doing. I don't understand. It is. A bit, I do tend to agree. I do tend to agree. I think this is someone who, whilst you can't. Whilst he can play left back, as yeah. in he's a left footed defender, um, and I think even, you know, he's, he himself has said, like, I've, I've played full back as well in the academy and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's not his position, the future of his position. Mm. And with the way I think, especially when you think of Poch and like his, if you think of his philosophy of playing football, fullbacks going forward were so important. You think back to Spurs, especially. Uh, fullbacks going forward were so important. He, uh, he had Trippier on the right, he had Danny Rose as well on the left, and they were so good at bobbing forward. And that's not really Levi Cole's asset. Like, he can pass the ball. He's very good at distributing the ball from the back. Yeah. But not on the left wing, where he's expected to kind of go past his fullback at times. The, the, their problem is they convinced him to stay. Yeah. He had a chance to leave. And I think that had to come with an assurance of game time and the way that they've got around that. Is to put him in at left right, back. Yeah. He's not. And the, the thing is, I saw gossip, rumours, whatever. Apparently, Liverpool were interested in Liverpool him. Liverpool were interested, apparently. yeah. And you can imagine, given the fact that he's a homegrown player, that they could cash in. You, c I can completely see why all these big teams would still be interested in lo uh, lodging a 40, 50 million pound bid for Levi Colwell if he was going to play at centre half. As you, like you're, you're bang on. But yeah, he is not the most disappointing player in this Chelsea team this no. year. Yeah. That's, that comes. <laughs> Well, I mean, how long well, we got? Well, well look, okay, <laughs> so just quickly to add you a little bit of context for Colwell. So far this season, he's played nine times at centre-back and has played 16 at left-back. Uh, he only played once at left-back for Brighton. Yeah. Uh, so I can understand uh, why maybe people think that due to what they saw last year. But yeah, he's playing in a position that isn't probably where he should be. Uh, so the other name that came up a lot was Caicedo. Mm. Um, now, this is obviously somebody who is the most expensive British transfer record. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. I say it? 115 or something? Was it, was something it more like than Rice? I yes. think, yeah, it was more than yeah, Rice, okay. that's for sure. Okay. Um, so, obviously, the most expensive uh, Premier League signing. Um, someone that was brought in to kind of fix the midfield for Chelsea. Him and Enzo would unlock it and become this incredible uh, midfield partnership. Has that happened so far, John? No, of course <laughs> it hasn't. No, it hasn't. But again, I'm conscious. I don't want to be just picking on players in that system because I think Chelsea... We know Chelsea's problems, like he said, and we could do a whole show on it. I think Caicedo will come good, but when you come with that sort of price tag, it's basically destined to fail. Mm. What are you going to do from a central defensive midfield yeah, position true. for, what is it, £100 billion? What's he going to do? <laughs> yeah. What's he going to do? Do you think that is right, then, that he is it's disappoint It's been a disappointing transfer? I think, uh, yeah, I think it's been disappointing. I think someone doesn't help him, and I think that someone is Declan Rice. Similar position, similar oh, okay. money. Has been unbelievable. But even he's been getting kind of stick, stick yeah. recently. Not passing forward, right, yeah. which, which backs up your point about the price tag. Like these are CDMs. Let's remember. Yeah. I just, I just think that Declan Rice, numbers-wise, has been doing more of what he was doing at West Ham compared to what Caicedo was doing at Brighton. But also, this is kind of a problem with your midfield: is there's not enough competition. So you've got Conor Gallagher and essentially those two guys. So. Without kind of more competition in that squad, well, there is there is the youngsters like Lavia. Yeah, who's well, he's been injured for most of the time. Very I, injured. The guy who signed Leslie, Leslie Yeah, but they're not super they're young. Not, they're not, not, super they're young. They're not good enough. Like last one in particular, like Lavia had a good, he had good moments in a relegation threat side where I imagine he was given a lot of license to kind of run around and crush players, which he, which he did. But still, sixty million pounds is a big ask for him to come. Massive step up to Chelsea in a very turbulent period. I just think Caicedo had more experience uh, than Lavia. And yeah, for the money, it's, it's just not quite working, really, uh, no. at the moment. But I, I still back him to come good. I just think the midfield has just been a bit of a conundrum for Chelsea. And that wasn't the area, necessarily, that we thought they'd be struggling this season. Yeah, I mean, I think past you, Caicedo, as well, like he is being asked to essentially kind of be this destroyer and win the be the last of the midfielders and win the ball back just in front of the defense and play it forward or whatever and that's kind of not what he was doing actually at Brighton mm -hmm. he was a little bit further forward winning it a little bit in kind of what Kante used to do at Chelsea where when Kante first came in everyone was like at Leicester he was the DM and like that's what he'll be expected to do here and actually at Chelsea he ended up becoming this kind of further forward midfielder who would win the ball high up and then allow us to go forward um and I think 
Kaiseido was similar to that at Brighton and now being asked to do the op- kind of that a lot further back. And like, I think sometimes his, his passing isn't the, the best in the world and that can be improved. And sometimes he, he's, a, he's a little bit poor under pressure when he's got other guys pressing him at the same time. And so I think basically, I think you're, I think you're quite right, John. And if you are a defensive midfielder who costs over a hundred million pounds, you're never going to quite be satisfied with them. No. Like they have to be Rodri basically yeah. and some yeah. and a little bit more maybe like and that and that's the best dm in the entire world um and who knows maybe one day when he, he's only 21 i think so when he's yeah, yeah. 27 or 26 it, you look back and you think oh it's slightly different but right now i can understand understand why chelsea fans are disappointed um i saw i think sterling's name thrown in there a couple of times um trying to think who else that was mentioned reese james was mentioned as well um the problem with sterling is he does have those moments like when he didn't square the ball the other day and you sort of think oh yeah what's going on you know that's i think those are the, but i in principle i think sterling has been pretty lethal this season. Yeah, this, this season, season has been better. Yeah, this season has definitely been better than last year. Um, Reese James, yeah. I mean, look, when you, for someone with the potential that he has and the ability that he has just to be injured consistently, um, can understand why that is disappointing for sure. Mm. Um, let's go then to Manchester United. Um, this one comes from Tricky Turtle. Oh, yeah. Great. Good name. And he said Andre Onana. Oh, no. Uh, well, I saw a stat that he's, I think they're second most clean sheets. Second most clean sheets. He's one away, one away from the most clean sheets in the world, uh, in the world, in, <laughs> in the, the Premier League. In the world, in, in history. The Premier League. Uh, yeah, proof stats aren't always what you should go off. Yeah. Because when I watch him, I'm not convinced at all. I, I really don't know if he's got what it takes. And I think it's just got shambles written all over it. Every time I see the ball come near him, I'm like, oh no, oh no. Mm. He's just no. He's lacking in so much confidence. Yeah. Like, so much confidence. Like, I think there was a time where he was... It was a, it was a smart signing for if United could play a certain side of football. Mm. Like, if United were ball dominant and they were, like, wanting their goalkeeper to pass out the back as much as they could. And I think that's eventually, obviously, where they want to be. Onana's, like, an inc- a fantastic guy to do that. Um, and he's probably got... He probably, at that time, as well, would have a little bit of a better defence in front of him as mm. well. Uh, he's always been... A goalkeeper prone to clangers. I remember when, even when he was at Ajax, uh, he's conceded from the halfway line before. He's, yeah. he's had some crazy moments then. And so it, that also happened at Inter, albeit actually a little bit less so. Um, oh, he was pretty good at Inter. But at Manchester good. United, it's definitely come back. And that has kind of come with possibly the pressure that he's had to deal with as well. I think some of the stuff he said come after games have never been quite great and kind of backing himself up afterwards. Um, and so, yeah, I, again, can understand why he's disappointing, but. Is he the most disappointing player in Manchester well, United? <laughs> let, with Onana, in the league, I actually think he's okay. Yeah. In the Champions League, he put in one of the all-time stinkers. <laughs> like, yeah. over six games, not even just a few isolated incidents, over six games, I've never seen a goalkeeper performance like it. And that is a big problem for United. They, they're not even in European. They finished bottom of a group with Copenhagen and Galatasaray. It's criminal. Yeah. And sadly, Onana is heavily to blame for that. In the league is okay, in my opinion. What I will say is, I think he is a better goalkeeper than Anthony is a right winger. <laughs> and I know I, I, I will, And Anthony, for me, the fact that they've loaned Jordan Sancho out now, obviously it's early in January, the fact that they're like running with a right winger of Anthony is so poor because this guy, also a bit bereft of confidence too, and you can see that. Had some good moments last year, I think against City, scored a great goal yeah. um, from outside the box. He's there is something there, but he again hamstrung by an eighty million pound transfer fee that should never have been paid. He just is completely toothless. He cannot take on defenders. He cannot beat them with any. They, they all know what he's going to do. Yeah. We were saying against Fulham, it was almost a gift when the ball goes out to him because you know, right? We can probably shut this down with Anthony Robinson. I back Anthony Robinson over him every day of the week. 100%. So it's it's for me, Anthony is a glaring hole in this right hand ta- attack for United and for me he is the most disappointing player he's done he's regressed from last year it really shouldn't have been the case and I don't I can't really figure out why he just I remember he was playing for Brazil lots in the World Cup how he's he's just not he's just not good enough like how is he a Brazilian attacking player no I think Ten Hag's kind of persistence to to use him at times I mean to be fair that seems to have slightly changed now. Um, it is quite, was massively questionable, especially a player who was so lacking of anything, ability and confidence. Um, 
And then when and then the whole like Sancho thing, like I guess people are always gonna come back and be like, if Sancho had said sorry, be back in the squad and all that kind of stuff. And and now we've seen him play half an hour for Dortmund and get an assist already, oh, yeah. um, more than Anthony has so far this season. Uh, Timo Werner's got an assist before Anthony has this year, um, <laughs> which which is crazy. Um, is that and true? so yeah, wow. yeah, he got one. Obviously, he got one against United. Um, and so I think. I think he's always he is always going to be the most disappointing player. You, when you spend as much, and also especially when you've got Eric Ten Hag there, who is, he is Eric Ten Hag's guy. He is the guy. Eric Ten Hag came in and said, "Hey, I want you to go and bring in my best attacker, I guess, from from the previous season at Ajax, uh, so he can help me play my football, and we will be successful with him here." Okay, yeah, we may not value, value him at twenty five million. No, I want him to come. Okay, we'll get fifty. No, uh, they, I say no. We want him to come. Uh, they go all the way, to, as he said, to eighteen, and I think rising to ninety, isn't it? And it's crazy. It's crazy how poor he's been. Um, I, just, I just think, like, when you look at the style of attacker he is, I kind of put him in with Ziyech. You know, I don't know if he has the mm. physicality of the Premier League. Like, you could say Kulusevski is a similar style of player as well, but Kulusevski's got a bit more about him. I'd yeah. say he's well, got he can, a, bit he, more, a bit more creative. A bit more creative, a bit more yeah. drive. And it's just interesting that those kind of slow wide men with one footed wide men don't always cut it. In, in the, the Premier, Premier League, League. Like not, yeah. Iron Robin set a standard which will never really be reached. In that. He was quick there, Robin. Yeah, very quick. Yeah, it's destined to fail, isn't it? I think it's like you said. He's the, he's, he was the signing. You think of Manchester United, you think of wingers. Mm. You think you think Flair. You think Cristiano mm. Ronaldo, and they signed this one. You're looking at Twitter highlights of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These like all these tricks, these spins. He's, he's got the blonde dyed hair. He's got the mercurial. You're going, okay, this could be it. And you watch it, and you're like, I did. That can't be the same guy. Like, did, yeah, we, yeah. did we? Who have we bought? Like, well, he's, just, he doesn't have it. He started the season last year not too bad. I think he scored a couple of goals. He's on his like, debut, he, I yeah, think. He, he obviously he had that finish. Him. He had that finish a couple of times where he cuts it on the left off the right and and puts it top bins. Um, but then this year, just like, I think you're quite right. I think defend defenses kind of seem to get the ball and they go, oh, okay, sure, that's perfect for us. We we know how to deal with this. Um, so yeah, I can under, I would agree, Henry, that I think Onana is. Sorry, it's not as disappointing as someone like Anthony mm. so far this year. And they're going to have to stick with Onana. They've got to. When you spend 45 million, I think it was, rising to 50, um, you kind of got to stick with it for a goalkeeper like him. And I actually think he'll get better. Yeah, me too. I think give him time and a little bit more confidence. And as I said, the Premier League, he has been a lot better. And so we'll we'll see what happens with him, especially as well when the whole defence gets back. Martinez is now back. He's better yeah. with the ball at his feet and stuff like yeah, that. He has the back... That's another really good point, is that United central defence has been changing a lot. Johnny Evans was not meant to be playing as many minutes as he's played. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and Casemiro, and I, I, look, all, all respect for Johnny Evans. I love mm. that guy. For him to have just stepped up and Ten Hag gone, well, you're the only one who can week in, week out, put a consistent game together, yeah. so you're in. Huge respect to him. But that defence is not at the standard it's meant to be. And also Casemiro in front of that has not... He, he's arguably... Yeah, one of the most disappointing say. players in United this year, considering how good he was last year, considering who he's meant to be, one of the all-time great mm, CDMs. Yeah. He's really dropped off this year, and you, it's it's you cannot overstate how important that is to the side, to the defense, the goalie in particular. Like they need to breed confidence off each, each other, and it's not. Yeah, it's the trust, isn't it? He wants to play up from the back. He looks up, he sees all due respect, Johnny Evans, and goes, "Oh, double tech and then that leads to mistakes. So yeah, goes, I don't want to play it, and then that's where these things come in. That's a very good point. Very good point. Okay, we go to Tottenham Hotspur now. Who it's a little bit hard to, I guess, find a player from them considering how good they've been this year under Ange Postecoglou. Uh, and this one comes from Billy JMU, and he said Brennan Johnson. And when I saw, oh, wow. I forgot how much Brennan Johnson cost. How much? Forty-seven point five million that much? pounds. Really? Yeah, from Forest. Um, so far this year, he's got four assists and one goal in eighteen Premier League games. He's only twenty-two years old. Um, but I feel like it's. Uh, I know it's, it's it is a decent amount of money, um, considering obviously the amount of money that's spent nowadays. Actually, not ridiculous um, mm. for a guy who last year for Forest had. A good season, yeah. uh, a good season, all things considered as well, uh, in their first year back in the Premier League. Um, and for Spurs, I think he's quite an interesting player because he can play both flanks. He can even play through the middle as well. He played a lot of minutes down the middle for Forest last year. Um, and whilst he may not necessarily have the numbers right now, I think he does a job. I think there's a good job, someone that can be developed. And I think under Ange, with the way Ange wants his wingers playing, he fits that mould. Like, I don't think, what I quite don't understand is what Spurs fans thought they were going to get with him. Like, did they think they were going to get, like, the next Gareth Bale because he was Welsh? Or because mm. did they think he was going to be a, a lot more exciting? Like, I think he has been 
better than he was last year at Forest, mm -hmm. of a player that is young, playing in the wing position now, uh, yeah. in a new system, with a new surrounding, with better players as well around him, uh, with a new manager, and has kind of, yeah, totted along nicely. Obviously, he's got Song Hyun Min through the middle. He's battling with um, Richarlison, Kulisevsky as well for the wing positions too. Now, Timo Werner, I think he's generally been all right. I, yeah, I think Richarlison, who's meant to be a striker, could be equally as disappointing. Been better this year. By this. Six goals in six games, Tennis. Is it six goals in six games? Six goals in six games, games right now. I, I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brennan Johnson is tricky. Like, he was, he was the talisman in that Nottingham Forest side. And I think... When, when you're given so much license to kind of go and be that be that guy, it's quite hard to then come into a team which is more kind of holistic at yeah. time, let's say. And he has looked a bit overawed at moments. I, I think early on he missed a few opportunities to get onto the score sheet, which I think that would have dragged on, dragged on, dragged on a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it, it, he's starting to find his feet. And, I, yeah, I agree with you. It was a lot of money. I think it was interesting that, like, Brentford were in for him. And then yeah. <laughs> Tottenham came in, maybe suggests... I wonder what the middle ground of clubs looking at him was in, in that regard, because it's quite a big jump to go from Brentford uh, to Spurs. To Spurs, and yeah, well, was I, it considering Spurs had just lost Harry Kane and like the? You think of where people were talking about Spurs before the season started to now, like I know Spurs fans when they signed him. Obviously, I, we, know, we know Sonny. Like he, he he wasn't enamoured by the the Brennan Johnson no. signing. I, I I think Johnson needs space in behind. He needs to be. When there's a defender in front of him, I don't believe that he but, can okay. beat the guy. I think he needs, he almost needs to be unleashed. He's more of like mm. a last, in my mind, he's more of like a last, a last man kind of winger in terms of like he can attack space. When he's one-on-one -on -one with a defender, I think sometimes he looks a bit overawed. But I think playing alongside someone like Son, who didn't set the world, I can't remember if his first season at Spurs was like fireworks. Always obviously amazing. But to be around that level of professionalism, I think will only improve... Um, Brendan Johnson, but yeah, a lot of money, but he's young. He's also like a young British player as well, so they probably were thinking about that when they decided to. True. Mm. The door. Very true. Any thoughts from Brendan, old uh, John? I like him. It's like eye test, isn't it? I mean, Anthony, we just yeah. spoke about when you watch, you go, I don't really know what's going on. But with Brendan Johnson, I've watched a few Spurs games, and I like the way he yeah. plays. Yeah. I watched him again. You know, I, I think he's a good player, so give him time. I think, like you said as well, Spurs were expected to be terrible. Yeah. And <laughs> they are... They're not terrible. I can tell you that. So yeah. they've done they very happy. Well. They've done very Maybe well. There's been too many disappointments. Richarlison, I would have said up until a month. And now yeah, he's, been, you know, he's done pretty well. Unreal. He's so. done pretty well. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any if anyone else in that squad who could maybe like Rom Romero, red cards and silly. Yeah, games. He's still, he's still, still he's he has that, been good. He? Yeah, he has been. But good. he does silly things. But that's kind of what you get with him. I guess uh, Eric Dyer when he was there. <laughs> He's now at Bayern Munich, of all things. Jesus. Um, yeah, look, uh, let, me know, let me know what you guys think, Spurs fans especially, in the comments below of Brandon Johnson and all of you guys about these players or any other players that we might have missed out. Get them in the comments below. Uh, we head up to Newcastle now. This one comes from uh, George and also Belsey NUFC. George suggested Almiron, who this year uh, for Newcastle hasn't been as, been as good. And Belsey NUFC suggested Harvey Barnes. He's been injured in the though. summer. He's injured. Well, this his reasoning, mainly because we spent so much on position we did not need. We needed right wing more, and he's played three games and is still out now. We spent £38 million on him. Um, Has no Spurs fan said Trippier? Newcastle fan, sorry. Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle fan. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Newcastle fan said Trippier. No, no one said Trippier. Yeah, no one said Trippier. Wild. Almiron came in. Interesting. Um, Almiron has been better in the last two games, but I've said this for a while now uh even when he was like having his purple patch last season like they do he's a player that can be improved on if i went to you right now you need to improve the left wing the right back or the right wing who what would you do you'd pick the right wing they've got tina livramento as you said they've got multiple players that play on that yeah. left you've got isaac that can go out on that left um you've had joe Linton that plays obviously harvey barnes now that he's injured the right wing, Almiron, just needs to be improved. Get Jack Grealish to send yeah. a couple of tweets out <laughs> and he's flying. 20 yeah. goals a season. <laughs> I think with Almiron, we have to remember, he came from the MLS. Like, yeah. he's, whatever, whatever you think of him, he's been value for money. I mean, he was a yeah. slow, slow yeah. burner yeah. at first. But yeah, I think he's kind of embodied Newcastle over the last 12 months. And that last year, they were just burning so hot. And some of Almiron's goals were just next Outrageous, level. Outrageous, yeah. yeah. We weaving yeah. through finding the corner, whatever. It's hard to replicate that. And I, I would say, I said it in the start of the year on a, on a previous show we used to do. And uh, <laughs> I, I said, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for Newcastle to maintain this level. And sure enough, they've had unlucky 
injuries and whatnot. Yeah, they haven't been able to do it. My, Almiron, I still think Almiron's a pretty good player. I think uh, Trippy is interesting. He's still got you, like you six think Trippy assists. has been... But some of his blunders recently have been yeah, really, was... really awful. His last two months, Trippier, have been poor. Have been really poor. I think that's where it, things have kind of gone down. And they, but still, like, Eddie Howe is like choosing him over Tino Livermento week in, week mm. out. Um, Tino, like one minute he's in for a little bit, then he's back out consistently. I guess he obviously... I mean, Trippier really was the kind of first signing of this this uh, Newcastle um, generation and rebuild. Um, and I guess he is getting a little bit older now. You've got to he back him, someone... though. He is one of the best. He has been one of the best right backs in the world over the last oh, few yeah. years. Oh, yeah. His numbers are crazy. I, I think he's performing really poorly. When I see that, that goal that Oscar Wobb scored past him, and it, you know what? If you watch it in slow motion, once he goes past him, you see Trippier's head just drop. <sighs> and he's been mm. responsible for so many blunders recently for Newcastle. When you're the club captain, you're the big sign and you've come from the league winners in Spain, it's not good enough. Yeah, I, I feel like, it, for me, it's not good enough. And like you said about Almiron, come from the MLS, over, like, overachieved massively. What's he supposed okay. to do? Carry Newcastle against PSG, Dortmund, AC Milan, Man United, City, Liverpool, yeah. or Almiron. That's not really his fault for me. Maybe it's more so that because of what he has, he was doing last year, and I think you're right, maybe because he it's was overachieving. Off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he has gone back to maybe the level that he was. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what... Um, Just like I say, get Jack Grealish a beer and hopefully <laughs> Almiron will start firing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, I, can, I think I can agree to the Trippier claim. I can agree that Trippier, I think, has probably been the most disappointing player so far this year. But again, like this is someone who has achieve such a high level yeah he's a brilliant player off. yeah okay all right well let, let's go with that i think i do agree harvey barnes is a little bit harsh to, to think, say right now I think ultimately to be disappointing you have to be good you have to be a good player right do you know what i mean so yeah. when you say someone's disappointing yeah, it's yeah, almost like a backhanded yeah. compliment it's like we you expect we, better yeah, from yeah, that yeah. player you wouldn't you know that is a good point that is a good point my friends um okay then we're going to touch upon uh bournemouth this one comes from guy afcb uh we don't need to touch upon it really because again it's a guy that's not really played that much but he was brought in this time last year dango watara came from ligan uh had a nice start last year it was mm. the kind of guy that i think bournemouth fans thought oh this this guy could really become something for us they spent 20 million pounds for him and Longs, so far Longs, yeah. yeah and so far um at least this season anyway He's not really played. He's been more of a bench option. I think he's uh, either gone to the AFCON or, or, or right now or was injured or has gone to... Yeah, I think he's gone to the AFCON. Um, his last three games before that, he was a little bit better playing left back before they lost to Spurs. Left back? Yeah, which considering he was a right winger. Um, obviously, they changed the manager. He doesn't seem to be in favour for him. For Bournemouth to spend £20 million, I know they've now got new owners, but still, uh, to spend £20 million is quite a big commitment to someone. Uh, for, and now for that player to not really even be starting week mm. in, week out, it is probably disappointing, Hennis. It is disappointing. And also, you just saw Hamed Troyore. He's got a loan move to Napoli. So that was another winger they bought in at a similar point last mm. year from Sassuolo. I liked Uatara. I thought he was great. Um, but I think maybe he's been undone by a change of manager. Uh, clearly, uh, Iriola has different ideas. Is it Semenyo? Semen mm. Semenyo? That he really likes an attack. Um, and yeah, I... They're just playing a different brand of football now. Maybe Uatara doesn't quite fit into that, where he was more of like in a direct front of three last year yeah. under Gary Neal. And now they spread their attack a lot wider. So, and I, I guess Kirkej is a really good right, uh, left wing back. And that's probably just stopping Uatara getting game time on the left flank. And um, yeah, it, I mean, the problem with Bournemouth is they've been on such an upward trend recently. If you've not been involved in that, like Uatara, yeah. yeah. then it's going to be hard to break into the team. Because Iriola's probably looking at this going, well... I've suddenly got this team playing the way I want them to play. We're and winning right games it. again. I'm not going to go being silly now and mix mm. it all up. So that's probably where he's been let down. And also Max Aaron's on the right wing back. That yeah, was, was I think that's fair enough. I was just thinking then it's like the opposite of um, Saka's transition. Saka went from left back to right wing and yeah. Watara has gone into left back. A little bit different player. A little bit of a different player. Uh, okay, then we're going to go talking about Saka actually uh, to Arsenal uh, because we've got two sessions here. One from This Ain't It, Ben White, and the other being Kai Havertz. Um, now again, Ben White, someone who last year it was fantastic, one of the best right backs in the league. Um, to this year, again playing right back, dropping off a little bit, which feels weird to say considering you know Arsenal have been pretty good, maybe not so the last month or two. Um, but yeah, Ben White, how do we feel about him, John? I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm just not convinced he's for me a good enough player to be what Arsenal need in that position, a right back who's you compare it to Kyle Walker, right? You compare him to Kyle Walker for Manchester City or Trent 
who brings his own skill sets. And I just look at Ben White and I'm just like, he's kind of okay at everything. But when I watch him, I'm never like, oh, wow, that was an amazing anything. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. He's, he's consistent, but I don't know if I'd say he's been disappointing. Obviously, Havertz, you touched on. Again, I said earlier, can you be disappointing if you don't really expect anything? No one really expected Havertz to be... If you're to, brought in for 60-odd million pounds and Arteta's go, going, you know, I believe in this guy. But what was, the someone... narrat- what was the narrative? Even for Arsenal fans, were they excited? I think they, I think they thought like, well, I think a lot of them believe basically the whole like, you don't trust an Arteta. Like if he yeah, thinks that this yeah. is the guy, obviously he brought in Odegaard, he brought in a few of the other boys. Like if he thinks this is the guy, then we've got to trust in him. Like I think you can mm. as an Arsenal fan, if you spend, if any club spends 60 something million on a player, you can have an expectation to be like, they're going to be good. They're mm. going to be exciting this season. You, you can, but I, I can only speak from my own opinion. And I saw Havertz, oh, I went, well, that's yeah. not going to work. I wasn't yeah. excited. I, I didn't even think, oh, that would be amazing. I guess for you, especially if I get, you know, from my point of view, obviously someone who who has experienced him and seen the kind of the, the disappointment at times when you expect big things i guess for you just looking at it like kind of like a no hands in any of the pies that are being involved here you can look at it un- unbiasedly yeah. um i think ben white is again for someone that was so good last year going forward as well like this is someone who was traditionally a, a center back mm. played dm i think at times um throughout his career uh been put out on the right flank as more of like a, we just need to kind of you to do a job there. And then suddenly you, everyone goes, oh my God, he's actually pretty good at this. Um, to then this year, have a decent start and then kind of drop off, as I said, for the last two months. I can understand why people are slightly disappointed. I can understand because this is some, especially with the way fullbacks are used nowadays, it's mm. someone that you need to kind of help going forward and you need um, to, to help with getting goals as well as defensively. But, and he has been better at times but oh. when you spend 65 million pounds on a center midfielder uh, or well a striker slash winger yeah. slash center midfielder you probably expect a little bit more on ben white i've never got it i've never understood the unbelievable hype and last year arsenal fans were saying this it guy. was good last year all right fine um, it was good last what's year. he good at what's he, no, no, what's no, he no. good at you know what Trent's uh, yeah, good at you okay. know what walker's good i can at. agree what's he good I think, at i think defensively i think defensively he's good i think defensively for a right back he's, he's very good i think he's a 6.5 out of 10 every game i don't think and i just don't think that was he's, really, he's not a man of the match defender you're right but <sighs> just just to go on on havertz he has been playing out of position for a lot and i did sit down with kai havertz and discussed it with him <laughs> and he said uh and he was like yeah it's not really my position but i'll do a job for the team like he Havertz's whole career has been defined by doing a job, doing a job for the team, yeah. moving around. And I get it. Like there, are, it's sadly like the pressure, the expectation, the the blooper reel is is growing. But the whole Arsenal attack's been pretty poor this year. I mean, for a long time, Saka had scored as many goals as Mudrick. That might still be yeah. the same. Gabi mm. Jesus has he really set the world light on this year? It's now blatantly obvious that if Arsenal wants to take the next step. They need to go out and sign a world-class centre forward. That is now blatantly obvious that they need to go do that. And like Martinelli, I think he's looked a bit. He's looked like he's run out of Good ideas. Disappointing. At points yeah. Yeah. I would say the whole the, the Arsenal attack as a whole has been more disappointing. I think than perhaps Havertz individually. It's just Havertz just comes with all the extra baggage, which I think really holds him down. So your most disappointing Arsenal player is Ben White or Martinelli or Havertz. Saka, no, 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 I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get good for that. <laughs> Can't be Saka, uh, no way. I don't know. What do you? What, who, who's yours? Uh, I don't know. With Arsenal, it's difficult. I really, I really don't know. I can't. The front line has been terrible. I saw some stats that they've scored less than ten goals between that front three yeah. this season. Um, so it's probably got to be one of them. So Gabriel Jesus, maybe, or maybe, or Saka. Saka's never really- Saka. It's never Saka. Okay, so they've chickened <laughs> out. Um, I think... I just think when you spend the money... But yeah, do it. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Look, guys, let us know what you think in the mm. comments below. I think Ben White is a little bit harsh, slightly. I do think he has been bad this season, but I think there have been more disappointing no, players. Not him. It's oh, not it's ben, not, White. ben White's not mine either. I just... No. Yeah. I, I could agree to maybe... Yeah, I think... I think Gabby Aziz. I think yeah, Gabby Aziz. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think Gabby Aziz. Yeah, I think Martinelli... Um, is still young enough and still has enough creativity in him to do it. Where I think Gabi Aziz has definitely been disappointed. Aziz started last season so well, didn't he? Yeah. I know he fell off a little bit, but he started, he's now someone... started this season 
He's terrible. someone who last year they went, you know, uh, he was injured for a while. That's why, like, he, yeah, I think yeah. he got, did he get 10 goals in the end or something like that? Um, mm. And that's why he was, uh, uh, you know, not, he didn't have the best ends in the end. Um, but this year, he has just been poor. Like, yeah, they, yeah. I think Arsenal fans have continued to go. Um, and this is someone, I actually like Gabby Jesus. I think he's somebody that is a solid forward. Um, but I think he, this year, it has shown Arsenal need a clinical goal scorer. Um, for to, to, to that spearhead that attack, and with Gabby Jesus right now, they don't have that. How have we not said Ramsdale? He's not playing. I think there's an argument. Playing. I think there's an argument to say Ray, Ray is Ray, disappointing. Yeah, Ray, Ray, I think Ray is good, was a guy that yeah. replaced Ramsdale. And hasn't been, he's not set the world a lot. Zinchenko. I mean, Zinchenko was actually yeah was. was you have to remember Arsenal are still doing pretty well. They're doing very well. Yeah, like, yeah. They're not, they're, yeah. But this is what's funny about Arsenal is there's all these narratives around these players, and yet they are still in a. Very much in a title race. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, cool. very true, very true. Be interesting what they do in the January transfer window, that's for sure. Um, let's head then <coughs> to Fulham. Oh, Michael finally. B brings this one and he has said, I'm going to leave this one to you two, Kenny Tete or Harry Wilson? Well, not, Tete's nonsense. He hasn't even been playing. Castagna has been picked ahead of him this yeah, year, which is a shame because I really liked Tete. I thought he was good. But actually, Castagna, pretty solid, mm. I would say. Harry Wilson... I don't know what you're expecting from him. He is exact. Is he, it not because Harry Wilson he, was like the star youngster at Liverpool? Yeah, but, you know, had really solid loan moves, came to Fulham and everyone was... Obviously, he had a good championship season as well. He's in championship season, yeah. yeah. Had injuries, obviously, as well that have de, de, uh, demantled... He is a 50... Top all top. of our wingers are upgradable. He's a 15 to 20 million pound winger, Harry mm -hmm. Wilson, in my opinion. Actually, he... like. I compare him to when Dan James came last year and was completely useless. <laughs> like, at least Harry Wilson has yeah, something about he, like he can create something out of nothing. He really can. Like his left foot is special, is yeah. unbelievable. He can score it, whipping crosses, whatever. I don't necessarily have a problem with Harry Wilson. I think now Awobi's at the Afcon. Hopefully mm. he'll get more solid run in the side. I trust Harry Wilson. I trust yeah. him. I don't. He's not my. Biggest disappointment at Fulham. I don't no. really know. I feel sorry for him in the sense that he played every <laughs> game in the champ. And then when we came up, it was like he just wasn't really getting that yeah, consistent run of games where that's difficult. Um, so it wouldn't be Wilson for me. Who's your most disappointing then, lads? I think Is it Rao Jimenez? Uh, Tim, Tim, Ream, Tim Ream's drop-off has been Tim huge. Ream's been, yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. He, he was brilliant for us last yeah, year. Yeah, he went from being iconic like Guardiola and saying, oh, if you were younger, you'd be playing for me. This year, it looks... Out of nowhere, as if time has really caught up with him. I love Tim Ream, though. I'll always, I'll always back him. Yeah, 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 I love him. Yeah. Do you not think the back line, though, kind of has had a nice input? Like, Tayson's fantastic, even yeah. though obviously the contract situation is interesting. Cameron Bassey, I think, no, has good. managed to improve, it's especially Bassey. the start. And do you know what? That's, when you were talking about Colwell earlier, it reminded me of Bassey because everyone was getting on Bassey's back. He was playing right centre back with left foot, debut Premier League season on his wrong foot. And he yeah. wasn't looking great playing out. And he's gone back, to, and now he's taken Ream, taking the club captain's. Position, yeah, you know, he's been solid. Team, yeah. He was good so, against Chelsea, I thought. I was I was going to say Traore. I would have said Jimenez, so but I think Jimenez has played. become so good. Well, he not really. Oh, he did at the start. Rubbish. But he just doesn't. Is he injured? Yeah. Uh, yeah, something's wrong with him. <laughs> it's too much muscle. It's got that Reese James thing Traore going on. Too the, much muscle. Traore is one of the like most interesting players of all time because he should be so good. Like yeah. he is te like on the ball dribbling is crazy. Yeah. Everything else is a shambles. Um, so you're going to say, but, uh, but not Bertrand Traore. Um, what's well, his first it's between Tra It's between Adama Traore Adama Traor, and it's it. between, for me, Kim, uh, Tim Ream. Mm. Oh, I love Tim Ream, so I'm going to leave Yeah, I can't yeah, say yeah, a bad yeah, word yeah, about yeah. Tim Ream. So All right. Traore it. Traor, Traor it is. Yeah. <laughs> there we have it. The little four minute segment about Fulham. You guys are happy. Um, we're going to go now to uh, <laughs> Liverpool, which is an interesting one here because Mazzetti has suggested about three in here and i was like uh, i can only probably take one properly kellia the goalkeeper um sub goalkeeper no belly plays cup competitions had a, it was he, he pretty good last year he needs to leave yeah he needs to go somewhere and be a first choice yeah because that game against fulham actually um at mm. anfield he was poor but yeah what you meant to do just jump into these situations literally can't live in allison's shadow no. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. uh other shout tiago um, but he doesn't play exactly, mm. exactly. Uh, and then he said, "Would love if Gravenberch performed better, but he's a young lad. Not going to pile hate on him. I believe he'll do better in the future." Gravenberch is an interesting one. Ryan mm. Gravenberch's last three years have been quite interesting, to be quite honest. Um, obviously, left Ajax to go and join Bayern Munich. Did not work out there. Um, 
especially fell out with Thomas Tuchel, then got a move to Liverpool this season, um, moved for 40 million euros as well as how much he cost. He's been a bench option. He started seven games so far this season, got two goals and one assist, but a little bit better in the Europa League. Um, he started four out of five um, in that Europa League where he's got his two goals and one assist. Uh, and also the kind of issue I guess he does have is Curtis Jones has been really, really good. <laughs> he yeah. kind of plays in that midfield position. But as I said, that is probably disappointing. Like, this is someone who I know last year was poor by Munich, but still kind of had the like, was really good at Ajax, was a really nice youngster coming through, someone that was super exciting. Um, and then you fast forward two years, uh, sorry, you fast forward even the year after these Bayern Munich, and you still go, well, he is still super, super young, and he is still young. He is still um, very, very young. I think he's like 21, 22. Um, and has a future, and you think, okay, maybe he can do this job in this Liverpool midfield. And just hasn't really set mm. it alight hasn't looked amazing and which is quite weird which i will hold my hands up here and i said um i thought it was going to be a good move and i still think it could be a good move like he's as the guy said young doesn't necessarily play a lot um but right now i probably did expect a little bit better from him i, I would have thought he'd be managed to make his way into this starting 11 and maybe thomas Tuchel was right <laughs> i don't know i feel like again liverpool are top of the league they're favorites for the carabao cup they're, they're, well, they're smashing it at the moment. I don't. I, I, yeah, yes. probably after Fulham. I don't. I just don't. I think we're clutching at straws. I, I watch him and I think he's just joined the team. When I watch him, I'm like, he's not too bad. He's you know he's going to bed him in. He's got probably the best man manager in the world in mm -hmm. Klopp to to get him to what he needs to be. Um, if you're going to say player names like Thiago, just to go back on that, you might as well say Robertson. It doesn't make any sense. Like just players that are injured, not yeah. playing. I mean. I don't really have anything to add to Gavin Birch. I, th I think he's going to come good for them, and I yeah. think it's okay. just looking for problems to say that he might not be. When you when you look yeah. at that Liverpool midfield, McAllister's pretty much nailed on. I think yeah. Sabotslai when he's fit yeah. is nailed on, and then you've got Elliot C Curtis Jones, Jones, man. Curtis Jones, brilliant. Um, Curtis so Elliot, good. Yeah, Elliot Jones and Gavin Birch. Like it's hard for Gavin Birch to because yeah. he hasn't actually. Other than Ajax, he's not played that much football. He, no, no, he hasn't. Yeah. He hasn't got a right to start over Curtis Jones, who's played far more Premier League yeah. football than him. Like, I mean, top level football, in fact. So, yeah, I don't. I've got no issue with him. I think Klopp's managing that midfield pretty. pretty yeah, well. and in terms of being disappointed, I didn't think he was going to come in and start every minute for Liverpool. I don't know if you did. Yeah, true. I, I didn't think so when I what saw about, him Callister, so was I What about Nunes then? Nunes, Gakpo. Gakpo is someone who's come in, obviously joined again this time last year. Yeah. Not really. Oh, I like Gakpo. I, I think like he's great. Him, yeah. He's one of the few Eredivisie signings that I actually think is going to work out because some of the Eredivisie signings have been <laughs> across Europe Stinky. are poor. Like, I don't know what it is about that league. But yeah, mm. it, I think Gakpo is good. Yeah, I think Luis you, Diaz? No. I, yeah, his dad was missing for... Yeah, you know, for, yeah it's true. I, yeah. I, I, Nunes, Nunes maybe, just because the blunder reel is still rolling on. But... It's impossible not to love that man. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll let you guys off with that. Um, okay, then. We've got two more. Um, Matty Cash from John Blicked. He said, we've seen glimpses, but often he's too inconsistent. Um, he's actually Diaby as well, who had a really good start, but has been quite dull since. I mean, I don't think I would uh, say that about Diaby personally. Um, but I think Matty Cash is someone who I've mentioned a few times as a place where they can be improved on. Um He's played Esri concert right back a few times as well. Kind of Cash has come on and been come off off the bench sometimes and kind of been a bit more of an attacking outlet for them. Um, yeah, I guess. But then at the same time, right, Matty Cash was a championship right back who they brought in. Yeah. Um, did he come in under Steven Gerrard? Or was it before I think, Gerrard? I think it was Gerrard. Yeah. Anyway, you know, ha went went through the eras of Villa not being very good, uh, losing obviously Jack Grealish and... Um, and then, uh, yeah, not necessarily performing to to the heights that we expected, and was probably the, a, a fine right back for that level. Uh, in fact, maybe even a little bit better than that level. Mm, and mm. now Aston Villa are challenging for a Champions League place. Mm. Um, and okay, yeah, Matty Cash maybe is a Champions League player. I mean, he's an international playing for Poland as well uh, um, on that kind of right flank. Um, however, yeah, I don't think like. It, it's kind of what you mentioned earlier. Like, what is if Aston Villa have now gone to another level, but Matty Cash is still at that same level? Is yeah. that a disappointing thing for him, yeah, or is that just him expected. still, yeah. yeah, being expected playing to that same level? Um, so yeah, I don't think Matty Cash has been disappointing. Personally. Last year, Unai preferred Ashley Young to him often at yeah. right back, <laughs> um, which I think is pretty telling. I don't know if the relationship between Cash 
and Unai Emery is that set in stone. If you're saying that they're playing concert right back as well, that's almost more mm. evidence of that. So, yeah, I, he's just pretty solid right back, isn't he? Yeah. I think that's all you can say about Matty Cash. Gets them the end of a few goals, gets a few assists. You're right, he is an upgradable figure. I'm not, I'm not going to criticise him too much. I don't think he's fundamentally holding back this Villa side. No. He, um, particularly the way they play is sort of high turnover, sort of explosive football. So, yeah, it's, I'm not going to, I think Cash is fine, but yes, he is an upgradable figure if Villa wants to go to the next level. For sure. Okay, all right, let's move on to the final one, West Ham. Uh, and this one came from Morgan, and it's someone that actually might be on the move this January. Uh, Nayef Agard, he said, he was really exciting. it was a really exciting transfer when it happened, um, and has looked class at times, but has had too many mistakes. Um, for this West Ham defence, with the way that obviously he, he's making it, he's obviously, I think he shipped off Tilo Keller as well, hasn't he, already so far? I was just um, He's been, he I think was, he's been. He was him, rubbish. I think he's mm. been him off now as well. I think the back line is Zuma and who is the other defender? I think I thought Agar uh, was playing a decent. Uh, the Mavropanos. Mavropanos, yes. Um, and so, yeah, ne- ne- not necessarily been the kind of star signing, but like, I don't know. Has he been? I guess if West Ham's if West Ham fans thought he was going to be a super exciting centre back and one that was going to kind of take them to that next level defence then yes he has been disappointing I think that is a, is, a, is a fair enough thing to say I think in terms of other players at West Ham obviously Skamak is not there he would have previously been someone that they, they would have suggested um, Ben Rama yeah he's been poor or Ben Rama takes the cake yes me, you're ben completely Rama, right yeah. yeah you're right yeah. Ben Rama by a mile is West Ham's most disappointing well, player yeah. the, the thing about this West Ham side is Moyes only uses a very small core of players he really does not like Maxwell Cornet has been on the bench all season yeah. hardly got a sniff whatsoever yeah. it, it's, it's uh, yeah. names escape me but he only uses about 15 14 players week in week out despite the fact they've got an amazing youth team as well winning multiple tro- trophies at the moment and yeah so if you're out of favor with him it is again quite hard to get back into mm. the squad but yeah Ben Rama I think he's being found out a little bit. I, could say. I mean, the problem is like Kudus is so good. Do you know yeah, I mean? he is. But it's... Ben Rama, like <laughs> Ben, Rama, he's not helping himself either. He's pasting highlights of himself at Brentford. Oh, yeah, uh, on his Instagram as well. Is he? Yeah, he's pasting his highlights of himself got at Brentford. Sent off in the FA Cup. Uh, yeah, got sent off for just idiotic, out, just idiotic behaviour. Yeah. Um, and this is someone as well. Considering, remember when they bought him? Brentford hadn't been promoted mm. uh, to the Premier League. Um, he was expected, and he was bit, he had been so good in the championship. Mm, yeah, um, I remember that and, season. And you know, obviously, an Algerian hasn't even gone to the Afcon, mm. not been selected really? by not been selected by Algeria to go wow. to the Afcon. Um, and this is someone who I think a lot of people thought was going to be a super exciting, tricky, you know, skillful player, creative player, and work in the Premier League. And it's just not happened whatsoever. There's been a couple oh, of moments, right. a couple of moments, but generally stinking considering what i think was expected of him he was pretty good in the conference league last year i think he scored the penalty i think he's i think he, I think he scored the first goal in the final um oh god that has taken my mind back yeah <laughs> so he's had, moments. He's, he's had moments but yes i think i west ham are slowly getting it right in the transfer market apparently we're linked with ben rama which i'm not no Oh, oh, please no. Mate, William, your best attacker right. is William. Honestly, he was incredible. William is brilliant, yeah. He was incredible on the weekend. Okay, there we have it. Um, is there anyone else, guys, just, you know, I'm testing you here, that you think is worthy of a mention that wasn't mentioned by fans? Mm. Um, we didn't touch upon Everton. If there's any Everton player you think that could have jumped up in no, there. No, they've been really good. They have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have been. I think maybe, maybe... Um, Who's a striker they brought in the I'd summer? Say, I'd say... Ne- I, not Neto. Um, yeah, Beto. 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 He's Beto. been pretty poor. And he yeah. started well. Beto started well. And I actually thought, oh, they've got someone here for when Calvert Loon's injured. And then since then just hasn't really m- moved on. It's really funny sometimes, I think, with with, full, with transfers where the, the second the season starts... They look exciting, and they because almost like they don't have the pressure slash like the abuse yet. Yeah. Um, like Jackson, for instance, Jackson at the start of the season was even though he's missing chances, was exciting. Like was making chances for himself, getting in behind, so on and so forth. Then almost like three months into the season, and obviously everything that's happened, it just like stopped doing that. And mm. I can't, it's funny how sometimes how the the signings are good at the start, and then 
once a couple of bad mm. things go their way, yeah. uh, it doesn't quite um, continue. If, if anything, it drops off. But um, at, the, at the lower end of the table, I'd say that uh, Trafford and Golf Burnley. I really thought he'd be excellent. I mean, the whole a lot of Burnley signings have been yeah really tough poor. on Trafford though, man. Like he's going to concede so many shots, and like I realistically, well, yeah. has he been? Has he been? Like you, do you think he's been detrimental to their? No, you're right. You're right. Back line. Yeah. Like, he's a young goalkeeper. It's like almost when I remember when Ramsdale was at um, some of the other uh, Bournemouth that he was at and Sheffield United. Sheffield United yeah. um, and obviously they got relegated, but like he was still pretty good for them. But yeah. like when you're playing in that bad of a defensive side, is it going to concede goals? There's only so much a goalkeeper can do. Who's who's the guy they bought from Genk? Is it Tozer or something like that? Or... Oh, God. Oh. God knows. There's that. I mean, there's not many. They, they bought there, someone who'd got like oh, 30. Five goal involvements last year, and I think he's been. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what? The, well, there's the there's also the Burnley uh, again. Just forgetting the names oh, of these guys, no, no, uh, Moroccan um, attacking midfielder who oh, was Amini. great. Yes, he was great for them last year. Mm. Barely played this year, and I think he's off. He's going to be leaving this this January. Um, again, he was super good last year. Young player that Vincent Company used all the time. And they they, they, they have been the most disappointing team in that I really thought we were going to see something quite cool mm. from this side, but they yes, have no yes. for sure. They just. Yeah. In fact, they've had to like go back to like Jay Rodriguez as their leading man. Uh -huh. Kind of shows yes, that it's a bit like, depressing, isn't it? Yeah, dropped off. Yeah, like I guess I was just thinking about Sheffield United. I mean, Sheffield United are kind of there's no one there that Brian Brewster that we mentioned a few well, times. Well, they bought so Cameron Archer, worked. and I thought yeah. Cameron Archer was going to be quality, but he's almost become like a Brian Brewster again in that he's just not. Was well, he not injured for a little bit, Cameron Archer? It's just twenty million pounds is a big signing for Sheffield yeah. United. They yeah, you're not wrong. Right. You're yeah. not wrong. You're not wrong. Okay, then, guys, there we have it. Those have been our most disappointing players from your clubs. Let us know what you guys think of the players we mentioned, or if you've missed out anyone else in the comments below, I'll try and reply to you in there. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you so much, John, for joining me. Their socials will be in the description below, so make sure you check them out or go onto Twitter, type in their usernames Henry Hill, JCC World. Something like that. Something like that. World of JCC. Some, world of JCC. Yeah. There we go. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, then like the video. If you want to see more football content, then make sure you subscribe to the Zach Jalab channel and also check out last week's episode. And keep your eye out because on Monday, I may have another video for you. We'll see you later. Bye.